When talking about China-made cars, you can never avoid Li Shufu. When the Chinese could not afford expensive imported cars, it was he who produced affordable cars that ordinary people could afford. When China's privately owned cars were not favored by everyone, it was he who bought Volvo and marched towards a first-class car manufacturer. Moreover, he spent another 9 billion US dollars to acquire the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, fulfilling his original promise. I want to let Chinese cars go all over the world, instead of letting foreign cars from all over the world go to China. Some say he's bossy, some say he's arrogant, but I think that's what makes him unique. He has grown from a little cowherd boy to a car king step by step, from starting from scratch to acquiring Mercedes-Benz. Without the support of the fearless spirit of an entrepreneur and the ambition of an idealist, it would be difficult for him to succeed. Today, Li Shufu has become the richest man in the auto industry with a net worth of 100 billion. He has not only realized his car dream, but also won dignity for Chinese cars. He was born from the grassroots and has gone through five startups. His story has inspired countless entrepreneurs. So, what industries did he do in his five entrepreneurial ventures? Did he succeed every time? In today's video, let's talk about the entrepreneurial story of this auto tycoon. Hi! Welcome to Auto Age. Okay, let's get started. In 1963, Li Shufu was born in a poor and backward mountain village in Taiju, Zhejiang Province. Because of his poor family, when he was in elementary school, Li used to herd cattle for the production team in his summer vacation. After graduating from high school, Li Shufu didn't want to continue his studies, and what he wanted to do is to make a big career under the favorable policy of China's reform and opening up. At the age of 19, Li Shufu dropped out of school and went into business. In 1982, Li Shufu asked his father for 120 yuan to buy a portable camera and started his entrepreneurial career. Li Shufu walked around the streets, asking everyone if he wanted to take pictures. He ran all over the nearby parks, and he was very friendly and helpful, so the photo business was doing well. Li Shufu once said, I am from Taiju. First, we Taiju people are not afraid of suffering, second, we are not afraid of poverty, and third, of course we prefer to get rich. This businessman's spirit gave Li a brave and fearless character. It is precisely because of this that Li earned 1,000 yuan in just half a year when he started his first business, which was also the first pot of gold in his life. Li Shifu began to officially operate the photo studio and persisted for two years. As the market becomes more and more free, Although Li's photo studio business is very good, he still chooses to transform and seek opportunities in other industries. Li's first venture was over, but he did not stop. Perhaps even Li himself did not expect that he would go through five startups in his later life before he could achieve his final automobile business. In short, this little cowherd boy who came out of a small mountain village has started a new journey. At that time, Taiju had a well-developed market for waste electrical appliances. Li saw the business opportunity from these waste products. He separates metal materials from waste electrical appliances, and then sells them to realize the automatic profit of recycling. However, the good times didn't last long, and the competition in this business became more and more fierce. At this time, China entered a period of rapid development, people's living standards continued to improve, and refrigerators began to enter people's lives. At this time, Li Shufu turned his attention to the refrigerator accessories business. In 1984, Li and his friends co-founded a refrigerator accessories factory. Due to limited funds, his factory site was settled in a remote village. All the equipment was pushed by Li to the village with a trolley. He walked dozens of kilometers in the heavy rain and struggled for several days and nights to install them all. After Li Shufu's operation, the spare parts produced by the factory are sold well all over the country, and the products are sold to almost all refrigerator factories. A year later, 
he made a bolder decision to produce refrigerators. By 1989, Li Shufu had achieved an annual output value of more than 10 million yuan. Later, due to changes in the external environment and internal disagreements, Li gave the assets to the local township government. However, Li Shufu, who was 28 years old at the time, was still full of enthusiasm. He once again devoted himself to the decoration materials industry and started his fourth venture. We have to admit that he does have a talent for doing business, and he can succeed no matter what industry he chooses. Until 2009, Lee still earned hundreds of millions of dollars in profits from the decoration materials industry every year. At the same time, Lee acquired a state-owned motorcycle factory in Xijiang and started motorcycle research and development. In less than a year, he has achieved the leading position of motorcycles in China, and even exported them to many countries. Lee's success seems to be a miracle, but it is not. In the course of many years of entrepreneurship, he never gave up research and learning. When he was worth hundreds of millions, he still went to Shenzhen, Shanghai, Harbin, and other places to study, and his fluent English even surpassed many current Chinese college students. In 1994, Li Shufu, who had a thriving motorcycle business, made an astonishing decision to build cars. At that time, Many people were not optimistic about him as a layman, saying that he did not understand what a car was. Li Shufu said, what is a car? Isn't it just four wheels, a few sofas, and an iron shell? But it's not easy to build these four-wheeled things. Li does not have capital, talents, technology, and equipment, but his enthusiasm motivates him. Since then, Li Shufu began his days of groping, asking for advice, and struggling hard. In the end, Li Shufu made the car and quickly gained an advantage in the market with an ultra-low price. It has become his belief in making cars that Chinese people can afford. And the Chinese people are also very supportive of this entrepreneur who wants to bring benefits to everyone. By the end of 2006, Gilis annual sales exceeded 200,000, ranking seventh in the auto industry. The more well-known story is that Geely, which has been winning with cost performance for seven years, has acquired the world-famous car brand Volvo. When Lee proposed this idea, almost everyone disliked him. Industry insiders believe that, no matter from which point of view, Geely and Volvo are not in the same class. But Lee Shufu was not convinced. He said, I want to build the safest and good cars in China, and let Chinese cars go all over the world, instead of letting cars from all over the world come in China. This pile of China's largest acquisition of overseas vehicle assets was finally successful in 2010. Li Shufu has realized his dream, and through this acquisition, he has opened up a way for Chinese automobiles to go overseas market. In 2018, Li Shufu invested a huge amount of money in Mercedes-Benz, he is still achieving his goal step by step. This legendary Zhijiang businessman, from a little cowherd boy to a car tycoon, has been practicing the businessman spirit of Zhijiang, China, not afraid of difficulties and daring to be the first. Okay, that's all for today. Do you want to learn about more auto stories? Please keep following our channel and like our videos. See you.